Time now for Top Calls. It's a look at some of the big movers on the back of analyst recommendations. And first up, we have Lululemon raised to a buy at City following its quarterly results and fiscal year outlook. The price target got a boost to $440. That's up from $350. And analysts there saying that there aren't signs of a slowdown in sales and also expect growth in China to be a long-term driver for sales. You can see shares absolutely flying up almost 13%. And next up, we have Micron's price target raised to $90 at Susquehanna, up from $65. Analysts there saying that the upcoming quarter's operating losses, they present the worst case scenario for its near to medium term risk reward profile. Look at what shares are doing. Also much higher to the tune of 7%. And finally, Morgan Stanley reiterated an underweight rating and a $5 price target on shares of EV startup Lucid. Of course, this comes after the company announced it was cutting about 1,300 jobs. And the analysts are saying that other EV startups should consider similar cost-cutting actions. Shares a little bit higher, about half a percent. Those are some of today's top calls. And let's continue with the EV space right now. Joining us is Seth Goldstein. He is Morningstar Equity Strategist. And Seth, great to have you with us because we are expecting some news out of Tesla when it comes to their first quarter sales. What are you expecting? I'm, I'm expecting record delivery numbers. We've seen continued improvement in production uh, um, at the two new factories. And then as Tesla had price cuts, pretty much across the board in China, Europe, and the U.S. I'm expecting that to have spurred uh, a lot of demand. And, and so I'm expecting very strong delivery numbers, which has set Tesla up for their annual guidance uh, delivery numbers between 1.8 and 2 million vehicles this year. So Seth, does that mean that Tesla's uh, price cuts have been more than effective? It's, it's done exactly what they hoped it would do? I think so. I think it spurred a ton of demand. It, it helped relieve some of the burden to consumers, especially in places like China, where the, the federal EV subsidy expired in 2023, and places like European countries, such as Germany, where the EV subsidy was cut in half. And so I think that helped to spur demand, helped to ease, the, you know, in consumers' minds, having to not have that subsidy uh, helps with Tesla. And then cutting prices in the U.S. helped to ensure that more Tesla vehicles qualify for the Inflation Reduction Act tax credit, which I think also helps to spur demand in the U.S. too. And Seth, situate Tesla in the competitive landscape, not necessarily just with the likes of Lucid, for example, but when you think about Ford, for example, which has obviously earmarked a ton of budget for its EV effort. Yes, I, th I think Tesla still offers one of the most compelling uh, values for the price in the EV space right now due to having the best charging network in the U.S. and Europe with some of the fastest charging speed that I think helps consumers uh, alleviate some of the road trip anxiety that we see that still causes some consumers to hesitate when purchasing an EV. But when you look at Tesla being against a company like Ford, Tesla's Cybertruck is not yet released, whereas the Ford uh, F-150 Lightning is released and on the on the road. So, you know, that, that Tesla is going to have to face an incumbent there when they release the Cybertruck later this year. But for the current existing fleet, I think Tesla still does very well in the sedan and in the SUV space. So uh, it's interesting that you bring up Tesla compared to Ford. As a stock investment, uh, comparing Tesla with Ford, uh, obviously it's like comparing apples with oranges because Tesla trades at, what, 48 times estimated earnings. Ford trades at, uh, let's see, 7.6 times estimated earnings. Yet, I believe in your note, you indicate that you believe Tesla shares are slightly undervalued. What's the argument for why they're undervalued? Well, I think the market is still not fully pricing in Tesla's growth opportunities. When you look at not only just volumes, but you look at uh, growth in some of the ancillary businesses, things like insurance, things like the full self-driving subscription software, and the energy generation and storage business, all should which drive uh, stronger profit growth in the coming years. Very quickly here, do you, um, have you factored into your analysis uh, BYD saying it doesn't have any plans to enter the U.S. passenger car market? I, I don't think that will affect Tesla too much. When you look at the large EV players like a Tesla and a BYD, I think they're really competing not just against other EVs, but also against internal combustion engines. So mm. BYD is currently not going to enter the U.S. market right now, but will still continue to be a market leader in China, will grow in Europe and, and other geographies. So I think for Tesla, it, it's the same 
Um, they're going to be well positioned in all three countries, uh, U.S., China, and, and European Union countries. And, and I think both Tesla and BYD have ample room to grow.